you know, maybe a time when you weren't a good father or a good mother or a good brother or sister or you, you were a bad child or you didn't do a good job or you lied or you were dishonest or you stole. No one knows this but you or something you feel good about so you know there's a real dog in me to do that. Something you just really regret. So we make a list of all those things. All of us have some of that. Somebody say there's some good in the worst of us and some bad in the best of us. So none of us escape. Now here's something I want you to do. I want you to become involved in an active process to get some clutter out of your life. So if there's any area in your life that you need to clean up, start working on it. I'm going home tonight to clean my closets. Any of you got any cluttered closets? Oh, raise your hand, please. Good. Let's go home. Let that be our task this week. See, the first law of the universe is order. Go home and clean the closet out. Get the clutter out. Start letting some of this junk go to make some room for something else. Do that with people. There's some people who's cluttering up your life. They serve no purpose whatsoever. They're just holding and occupying the space that somebody useful, positive, nurturing, and contributing could be holding that space. You don't even have time to look to see what else is out there because you all have all of these people surrounding you that's not in enabling you to grow. So look at what is it I need to get out of my life. Just start cleaning this stuff out. Getting the drawers together, your dresser drawer, just getting stuff together, just get them together. Maybe uh, your car, I got to clean my car too, got a lot of stuff in that, live in my car, you know. Can't put anything in my trunk, I got all kind of little things back there. Two of my children back there in the trunk, you know. <laughs> Everything, stuff everywhere. So I just say, I say, hey, let me just get this together. See, whatever you have in your environment is a reflection of your consciousness. So you got all that chaos there. That represents some disorganized, cluttered section of your mind. So let's get all that out of there, all right? Work to get that out, clean that up. Anybody that you feel very strongly about, have some negative feelings about, let's look at some good reasons to forgive them. Number one, you must try and see what has happened or see things from that other person's point of view. Let's look at it from their point of view. That's, that's one area, that's number one. Then number two, Holding a grudge hurts you, it doesn't hurt them. So just for good health and peace of mind, let it go. Any feeling of resentment or anger or hatred is called to me the load of bitterness within. Every thought that we entertain produces a chemical in our brain that impacts the body's immune system. And besides, this person you're hating, they probably are not even aware of it. If someplace having a good time, don't even know you're really hating them. You've turned up the steam, gone from dislike to hate, intense hate. And here you are killing yourself, making yourself vulnerable to various types of illnesses, putting yourself in bad health. And I say that person is not worth your sacrificing your health or one minute of peace of mind. One minute of anger robs you of 60 seconds of happiness. So decide it doesn't matter. Let it go and experience the dignity and the magnanimous sense of character of being big enough to move on and get on with your life. Letting it go so you can grow. Next step. Lack of self-acceptance, how does it show up? How does it manifest itself? See, we, all of us have greatness within us. But when you don't come to grips with your greatness and you don't work to develop it, if you're not seeking it out, if you're not finding where it is, if you're not trying to locate it, if you're not experimenting with your life to try and find out what fits for you, I'm saying that you're positioning yourself to be a miserable person, an unfulfilled person. How else do we do it? Procrastination. We just put things off over and over and over again. Why? Because we haven't accepted it. We don't feel deserving. We don't feel that we're good enough. So we sabotage ourselves by not ever taking care of business. We get real busy doing a lot of things where we don't have any time. But well, I'll never forget Og Mandino in the book called University of Success. He said, many of us never ever discover our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We start doing so many things, we just give our time away until we don't have any time for ourselves or any time to do the things that we want to do. 
And every time you put it off and move it back, oh, I'll do it one day. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get to it. I'm saying to you that one day you look around and there goes a year, there goes two years, there goes three years. So is there something you want to do? Do it now. Do it right now. Don't put it off. Start right now where you are. There will never be a perfect ideal time. Whatever you have going for you right now, that's enough. Work on that idea. Work on it. Work on it. Work on it. Another way in which it shows up. And that is that because of the relationships we form, people we have around us, thinking about two guys, Larry Littles. He went to Bethune-Cookman College. He was a football player at Booker T. Washington High School, where I graduated from. Larry ended up playing for the Miami Dolphins, became an all-star offensive guard. Great guy. Larry really wasn't the most talented guy in that position at Booker T. Washington High School. There was a guy named Willie Covington that was far more talented. He was stronger physically. He was faster. But Willie Covington never, ever made it out of high school. Why, Les? He started running with the wrong crowd. Big Cub is what we called him. Started running with the wrong crowd, and those people led him to the penitentiary. And ultimately to a premature death. Got the word a few months ago he was shot and killed in Liberty City on 62nd Street, where I was born on the floor, my twin brother and me. Willie Covington had great talent, great potential, running with the wrong crowd. Watch out with the relationships you have. What kind of person are you becoming because of the relationships that you have right now? Do those people contribute to you? Do they help you grow and develop yourself? What kind of person are you becoming? People who have not accepted greatness for themselves, these people don't study, ladies and gentlemen. These people don't study. They don't have time for personal growth and development. They don't have time to work on their minds. No, they don't have time for that. Too busy for that. People can affect us. Our peers can affect us. Our environment can affect us just working consciously to overcome the poverty consciousness that I was raised in. The feeling constantly of saying, Les Brown, you deserve this. There's no need for you to be afraid. It's not too good to be true. It's true because you've earned it the old-fashioned way you have worked for it. But every once in a while, it comes up when I least expect it. My heart starts beating fast, and I start questioning myself and doubting myself, and I have to catch myself. You've got to be consciously conscious. So let's look at how we can begin to evaluate our self-esteem, our self-approval. Number one, to determine the height of your self-approval, it's important that you evaluate yourself because you know you quite well, but it's almost impossible to do it totally by yourself. You must get some caring feedback. Find somebody close enough to you that has observed you or been around you that you value their opinion and ask them how do they see you? How do they rate you in terms of your self-esteem? And then compare what you have with what they say. See, there are things many times that people can see in us that we can't see because it's a blind spot. If I were to be talking to you and my breath is offensive and you don't tell me, and then I go around, not only do you know, everybody else right here know. <laughs> and then when I'm walking toward people, they say, oh, Les, I'll be right back. You know? <laughs> and I don't know why people say, well, Les, we, we thought you, we wanted you to come to the party, but you can't come. <laughs> Now, all you have to do is just tell me, say, Les, you need to goggle with some ammonia or something, you know? <laughs> have you ever smelled someone's breath and didn't tell them, raise your hand if you don't? don't. So, so we all have those blind spots. We have those areas of our lives that we need to get some caring feedback. We need some coaching. We need someone to let us know that. And now, why don't people just volunteer that? One, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Uh, one, they don't want to embarrass you. But see, there are some people you know, you know they don't want to hear it. They're going to argue with you. They're going to become defensive. If you're one of those people, just decide to shut up and listen. Next thing is a good barometer to check out how you feel about yourself is how well you handle compliments. When someone pays you a compliment, can you handle it well? Lady was coming down the hall and they said, oh, what a beautiful dress you have. Oh, it's nothing. I caught it on sale. Nothing. <laughs> no, I didn't ask you, did you get that on sale? I just said, it's a beautiful dress. Can you handle compliments well? That's a good barometer about your self-esteem. Can you handle criticism well? Can you give criticism? Next thing is, what are your expectations? What do you expect to get from life? 
What do you expect to get from your business? What do you expect to get from your relationships? What is your ideal day? What is it that you expect from this experience, this trip, this journey that you're involved in? People that, that have a strong sense of self-approval, they have high expectations for themselves and from life and from others. See, a lot of people don't expect much from life. So they don't shoot for much. They're not preparing for much. A lot of people are just showing up in life. A lot of people just get up in the morning and they go through the day, they go to the job just to pull a check down watching the clock coming in. So you want to be a different kind of person as you forward your life. You want to get something out of this. If you're going to do it, it's worth your time, your energy. You've got some expectations from this. I do not let people waste my time. Someone want to meet with, meet with me, excuse me, what is this dealing with? I want to get to the bottom line. Because if it does not measure up to my expectations, I'm not going to invest my time. I don't have the luxury to waste time. I'm expecting some great things from life. And so I have to spend some time working on myself and developing myself. So examine your expectations versus your wishes. Some people wish they could do better. But some people expect to do better. Where are you on that?